Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Wind Waker. In the last episode, we gathered a few things before coming to Wind... Well, we went first to Great Fish Isle and found it completely destroyed with no sign of the water spirit Jabun, who is the one who's going to give us, hopefully, the next pearl. So we we found out that he's hiding safely on outsets behind a mighty stone slab that only bombs can break. So we came to Windfall Island to attempt to steal some bombs from the pirates. But look who it is! It's good old Nico! Oh, Doctor, my old swabby Doctor, so you're alive? All the other pirates said you got done in by the bird monster in the Forsaken Fortress, so I thought... Never mind what I thought, you're alive! Oh, I get it now. You came back because you missed me so much. I had no idea you wanted to meet my swabby so badly. Oh, I see, I see. Well, left you left, I went back to being the bottom rung on the ladder, which is why I'm stuck here while everyone else is in town, having fun and eating and stuff. <laughs> oh, that's a painful voice to do. <clears throat> Round two. But I guess being been worshipped by my swabby ought to cheer me up. Alright, why don't we send you to your next tester? This one is harder than the last. Good luck, you'll need it, Swabby. You can see there are lanterns hanging through the room, right? I'm gonna continue my old promise of not doing characters' voices when they're giving tutorials. His t challenge is essentially the same as last time, except for instead of the platforms being raised, the timer is now on the gate behind the door, so that's what'll lower when you run out of time. And you have to do a bit more swinging with ropes. As in, you have to change direction mid-swing. You can't always just trust that your jump's been at the right angle. But it's pretty straightforward again, and it's more straightforward on this than it was on the original Wind Waker because of how you can easily change direction in mid-air. And actually, technically, I think if you really balls this up, you can actually... Oh no, you can't. I was thinking if you could use a Deku Leaf, that'd be kind of cheeky. But it's pretty straightforward. If you want to stop to kind of a... Sometimes you land kind of too high up, the rope to get to your swing right, so if you want to stop and kind of re- oh nice. If you want to kind of stop and readjust your height up the ropes, you hold R and then continuing to hold R you move up and down and you can kind of slide up and down the rope. Like here, I wouldn't quite be able to make that jump because they kind of won't swing enough so you need to move like that. But other than that, this one's actually I think easier than the first now they've re-changed how you can swing because previously you'd have to stop whenever you wanted to change the angle of your swing and it was a bugger but now you can continue doing it so that's awesome. Anyway, that didn't take us as long as Nico thought it would, so... What? You did it already? You've got to be! You're incredible! Hmm, this isn't good. I've never even passed this test. How did he do it so quickly and make it look so easy? Never given to this, everyone will know for sure. Or I'll be so busted. Uh, okay. <coughs> You're the best swabby of all time, so... Oh my god! This voice is really uncomfortable things to my throat. Ugh. Ah. You're the best swabby of all time, so I guess I'll just give you the bombs. Come on, take him. Don't tell him, okay? I'm serious. Really serious, okay? Okay? It sounds like someone as well, like the voice. Sounds like something from someone from some cartoon, but I can't tell what. Anyway, like you said, there's a chest behind it. And I wonder what's in the chest. Surprise, surprise, you got bombs. You can carry up to 30. Pull one out, then press A or to throw it, or press ZR to set it at your feet. Try it out. It's a blast. Ah, Nintendo, you and your shit puns. I love it. Using bombs while on your boat gives you a mighty cannon that you can use to fight off seagoing enemies. Or destroy a mighty stone slab. <laughs> That's my courageous from you, trying to steal treasure from pirates. Yeah, we'd forgotten about the pirate stone, hadn't we? <laughs> I suppose I should be shocked, but I'm more amazed you managed to survive after being tossed out of that tower. From the look on your face, I have to guess you haven't saved your sister yet, huh? You don't give things much thought, do you? You just rush in, never thinking about how badly things could go for you. Like just now, the only reason you got away, you got what you did is because we left a simple-minded rat like Nico behind to look after things. Well, poor Nico, I like Nico. No one else would have parted with that treasure so easily, I assure you. And just how do you intend to use those bombs, anyway? Don't tell me you're going after Jabin's treasure, too. Right now, Jabin's hiding in a cave at the back of the island in which you were born. But the entrance is blocked by a giant stone doorway. You can't get in without breaking down the door. Wow, the amount of red text there tells you exactly what you need to do in case you were in any doubt. We're going to relax in town and eat our fill of whatever this town's got to offer, but we'll be leaving for outset first thing in the morning. If you manage to find Jebon tonight, I guess you win. <clears throat> I guess you win. Well, it's a woman's voice anyway, so it should have been slightly higher. Anyway. But if you take too long, we'll come sailing right by you tomorrow morning. And believe me, you did not get all our bombs. You better be quick, kid. I think we kind of traumatised Nico there. I don't think he was expecting his boss to be listening in and talking to us through a strange stone. But... I don't know why I left that pause there. I do that sometimes. I've noticed I just kind of stop talking and just start thinking. But what we need to do now, obviously, is head back outside to our boat. Before getting on the boat, though, we can briefly... The letterbox is going again, and there's something actually useful in it this time. Good evening, letters for the Doctor. We have one letter. Here is your letter. Notice from Beetle Shopship. 
It's time for our semi-annual Big Chance Avaganza, uh, extravaganza even. We have a new product that's burst onto the scene. Bombs! We're having an extra special sale on this choice item for a limited time only. You'll know where to find us by checking the enclosed beetle shopship charts. This is kind of occasionally useful, kind of occasionally, because as you can see, we've got beetle charts and it shows us where his shopships are, but it doesn't show us what they sell. So once again, gonna see if he has any high OE pairs. Not holding my breath, but... Somewhat unsurprisingly, the little bastard did not have any high OE pairs. Anywho... Well done, our preparations are complete. If what the girl has said is true, the pirates won't be leaving until morning. You must meet with Javon and get the pearl from him before they arrive. Let us delay no longer, Doctor. Cool thing during this scene now. Uh, the music is different. We get, because it's still nighttime, it's still very stormy and all, atmospheric and whatnot, we get a really different and really cool version of the Great Seas theme. Because, because shit's gone creepy now. So, it's not playing. There we go. So, I'm gonna just, I'm heading basically, not quite due south, but south, south, southwest, I suppose it is, heading down to out. But I'm gonna let this music play for a little bit as well, because I really like it. Have you noticed, Doctor? Morning has not broken since we arrived at Great Fish Isle, the land that was so ravaged by monsters, as is, the, as, is as if time itself was frozen. Meant to say ravaged, says ra said rav ravaged. Ah, oh. meant to say ravaged, said ra said. What did I even say? And said I can't even I can't even speak anymore. I meant to say ravaged. I said ravished instead, which has an entirely bit different meaning. And then the second time I said radished, which has no meaning whatsoever. So. But either way, he has got a point. It has still been the same kind of rainy, dark, stormy nights the whole time. Perhaps this is the curse that Falu spoke of. Whatever the reason, if this night does not end, we need not worry about the pirates overtaking us. In fact, it might not be a bad idea for you to visit your hometown and family again after such a long time away. We can speak with Jabon after you do. Now you'll notice there are a few little changes to Outside Island. First of all is the presence of choo-choos, which definitely weren't here before. Those appeared just as I wanted them to. Excellent. Now, however, we haven't been back to Outset since we've got the Deluxe Picture Box, so there's some little pictographs we can take, starting with these hilarious fellows. As you can imagine, these are crabs. The pictograph lists their talent as crab walking, <laughs> which I find amusing, and their description as, these creatures are crabs, plain and simple. Not really a great deal to be said there. Well done, thank you Nintendo for adding those enlightening comments in, certainly. Now if we come up here, look at this big bastard. Remember those pigs we brought back right back at the beginning of the game? Now, well, two of them we can only presume have died, or maybe they're just inside. But the black one is now mahusive. And we can take a picture of him as well if he turns around and looks at us. Come now, piggy. Here, piggy, piggy, piggy. What's he doing? Is he wallowing in his own shit? Yeah, that's a good enough photo anyway. Wild pigs are found primarily in the fields of Utter Island. They love all-purpose bait above all, the all of the foods, and when they eat it, they can't help but tear up the earth. Remember that, later. That is actually quite important. Now, there's a bit more stuff we can do here before we actually get on with the plots. So, the first thing I'm going to do is head... Ooh, no! Go jump off the bridge, apparently. No, the first thing we're going to do is head up to the peak of the island. Bah! Bleh, bah! Eh, eh, eh. I had forgotten that there were mini blends up here now. These are new as well, haha. <laughs> Aren't they fun? Anyway, the bridge is still out, as you can see, from when the Helmrock King attacked and stole 
Ariel, 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 whatever you want to choose to call her. But we can get across now, because if we stand up here and use the, rin, the wind requiem... God, I get... It's not a problem I normally have, but whenever I'm recording, I always have trouble with R's and W's. They kind of all blur together. I don't actually have a speech impediment, but... Interesting thing. Look down behind the island as well. I wasn't there before. <laughs> Think about that for a bit. In the meantime, we glide across here. Have I got... Yes, I have got enough magic for this. In fairness, most Deku Leaf glidings assume you haven't got the double magic meter, because the double magic meter from the squid on to I reef is well near to I reef is technically an optional oh that's a lot of magic is technically an optional item so you don't actually ever have to get it so there's nothing you need it for the this island's got a bit scary as well you can just see in the corner of the screen there's moblins over there as well as morphs and if we come down here you'll find a mothula hiding in the corner like some kind of creepy thing it's just a legged mothula though not a winged one but if we come up here, you might remember from ages ago, right when we were back here at the beginning of the game, when we first met Tetra, this thing was plugged. If we talk to this sign, well, talk to the sign, listen to the sign here, and it says, Fairy Fountain Site. Spots, this spot marks the remains of the ancient fairy fountain. The legendary hero was said to come here after battle so that fairies could ease his weariness. It was also said that whomever met with the great fairy who lived here was blessed with great fortune, so it became to know, known as the Fountain of the Fortune Goddess. It's got this big plug on it now, but we have bombs. So, explosion! Clears it away, and we can hop down. So, this is our first, fir first fairy fountain. Anyone familiar with any Zelda game will recognise the fairy fountain music immediately, and of course in the fountain is a fairy, which we can take a picture of if I can centre it right. Or not, apparently. Well, I'll try it again later. Oh, that was foolish. These are much less disturbing looking than the fairies in Ocarina of Time, though. The creepy boob fairies. Young waker of the winds, allow me to aid you in your quest. And she aids me, as ever, in the standard way, it seems, of blowing flower petals at me. Which is, of course, incredibly useful because those flower petals clearly contain none other than... A wallet, which means I can now carry more rupees and carry up to a thousand rupees. That's pretty useful. And she says the useful about the fairies in this fountain will ease my weariness. So she explodes into a swarm of fairies, and we can pictograph the easiest ones, I think. We just couldn't pictograph the earlier one because it wasn't a normal fairy, it was actually her in disguise. But we have to pick out an individual one. There we go, just turn around. Oh god, this camera is so sensitive on this, like, I wish you could... Well, I wonder if there is sensitivity controls somewhere. Come on, stay still, you buggers. I suppose they want you to have the blinking gyroscope on, but I ain't falling for that crap. Let's try again. These are, of course, just normal fairies. You can use, you can put them in a bottle, and you can do whatever the hell you want with them. That sounds creepy, doesn't it? Come on, man. Is that... No, grr, this is incredibly irritating now. There we go. Now... These are fairies. Fairies are the most reliable of creatures. When their master's life energy has been depleted, they immediately come to his or her aid. They must be carried in bottles. If you haven't got a fairy on you at the moment, get one from here. Believe you me, we will need it. But for now, we'll return back to the main island. Now, there's one final thing I want to do before going around the back of the island to find Jabun. Oh, the post box is dancing again. If we go through here, we will find the old swordsman. Walker, if you remember him from right back at the beginning of the game, he was the one who first taught us how to sword. Taught us how to sword! Way to English, Doctor. Ah, Doctor, you are alright. Why did you not tell me about Iril? That was thoughtless of you. This island has seen hard times ever since you departed. I do not know where you have been on your journey, but you seem more daring these days. That look in your eye is not the one you left here with. Very good, show me just how much you've improved your sword skills. So, you start a little minigame with Orca. Which basically involves you have to hit him <laughs> without being hit. You have three lives, which you can see at the top, and you lose one whenever you're hit. And there's a counter in the bottom, which counts the number of times you hit him. I shit you not. You can get a heart container from this, but you have to hit him five... No, it's not five. It's 300 times, I think. Or is it 500? I think it's 500 times without being hit three times. Um, you can just bring your shield up or you can try and parry. I'm going to do this and it's going to take me ages, so I'm going to cut, but before I do, I'm going to give you a few little tactics for kind of what works. Number one is just use your shield. If you parry, there's too much chance of you accidentally letting off a jump strike or something like that. 
Number two, be just be careful, kind of, after you've let off a few attacks on him, ease up and kind of, if it feels like he hasn't attacked for a while, stop attacking and shield, just because he attacks kind of irregularly, but there is a pattern to it. Number three is kind of pull back from him every now and again and try and keep both of you in the center of the room. If you get pinned up against a wall, you can end up doing some weird shit like rolling into a wall, getting stuck, and your shield might not work properly, so... Um, but advice number four would be... Well, like the other one, just kind of be patient. Um, number five... Number four wasn't really any good advice, but number five is... I would switch your L targeting from hold to toggle where you just press L and it'll keep targeting him because otherwise you'll be holding L for an extraordinary- Oh! That was accidental but cool. You'll be holding L for an extraordinarily long time. And my final bit of advice is pulse your attacks. Rather than what I'm doing here is just hammering B and so doing like a kind of combo attack but it's actually quicker and better if you just kind of go B, 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 B. Well, not that one but if you just kind of pulse- Pulse it repeatedly like, oh nope, oh we got hit already, that was bad. Okay, go one, two, three, four, five, six. And that way you're kind of, you're never in the middle of a combo so that if you see him start to attack, you can kind of stop immediately. Then you kind of pull him back, he'll follow you. And then you just keep doing this and watch that count on the bottom slowly go up, incredibly slowly. So I'll come back to you when I finish this crap. Oh, nope, nope, no. Oh yeah, haha! <laughs> I think I just managed 4500 that time! Ah yes, oh, 504 blows, you have improved! You have already become a fine swordsman, but I am certain you can do even better. Doctor, take this! And we finally get a heart, piece of heart for our troubles, which completes a heart container, which is awesome! And we do our little bow, and off we go. That is probably, as I said, the most tedious one in the game. So, fortunately, that's out of the way. Now that we've got that, we've got a little time left in the episode, so I'm going to finally get round to journey. Finally get round to. Finally journey around the back of the island to find Jeb. <laughs> that was ridiculous. Are you ready? If that is the case, we must search for the cave around the back of Outside Island where Jabun is said to hide. So let's do that. This is kind of annoying to get round because circling the island's a bugger when the wind's only going in one direction. So you kind of have to. Like you would normally have to change the wind here. But I'm just going to kind of half cruise along. You saw from the top of the island there is this whirlpool here which wasn't always here. So, without a second thought, let's go into it. Now, if you look to our left, which we can't... Well, okay. You'll see the giant slab was mentioned. Also, I brought up the bombs and they become this cannon. Like with a grappling hook, you don't have to have the item equipped to use them, you just have to kind of press one of the directions on the D-pad, it's the D-pad left now. And there's this nice thing that wasn't in the original game, this aiming thing that allows you to actually aim your bombs because on the original that wasn't there you just had to kind of look at the angle and just work it out essentially whenever you're close to this tablet thing here just hammer a onto it and just hit it with as many bombs as you can even though it kind of breaks in order like the top section then the middle section and the bottom section it doesn't matter where you hit it'll record damage on the whole thing and it's pretty straightforward like it takes about i think it's 10 hits total so there we go we smashed through it already if you don't do it quickly enough the whirlpool sucks you in, but it's really difficult to not <laughs> do it, I'll be honest. It's an incredibly straightforward minigame. So, let's go in and see Jabun. Yeah, he looks really cool on this. He's like a combination between some kind of Leviathan thing and Drippy from Nino Guni. But also, if you listen carefully to the music in the background, you'll hear it's actually a very subtle remix of Inside Jabu Jabu's Belly for a mockery of time. Also, Jabu Jabu, Jabun, have a little think about that. Like all the Sky's Roots, he speaks entirely in Hylian, so I'm not gonna. I could translate that, but I'm not going to. Well met indeed, Jabun. I am pleased to see that you are safe. <laughs> Yes, it seems Ganon has returned. There can be no other explanation. Unfortunately, that is not so. The one I have brought with me has no connection to the legendary one, and yet I spent great promise in the courage that this one possesses. I 
I do. It is the only way. Well, this seems like it's going our way. Obviously, I was kind of letting him speak there because he kind of does have a voice, even though it's creepy, but I wanted to let you hear it because it's creepy mostly. But he's been nice enough, no dungeons or any crap like that. He just gives us straight up Nairu's Pearl. Nairu's Pearl, even, how if you pronounce it. The water spirit Jabun was kind enough to give you this jewel, a treasure of one of the goddesses. So, that foul rain and endless night were indeed elements of a curse brought upon us by Ganon. He must intend to cast this land into pure darkness for all time. I believe I have. His eyes narrow sometimes. Makes you think that what he's saying might be angry. Later on in the game, I might actually give a translation for that, but it's all spoilers at the moment, so I won't be doing it anytime soon. Ganon's curse has been broken by the power of the pearl that Jibun gave us, so morning should come soon. It is well that we have gathered all of the pearls. Are you ready, Doctor? I have marked the places where you must set the three pearls on your sea charts. Once you have placed each of the pearls in its proper location, the proving grounds for your courage will become apparent. I nearly dropped the gamepad on the fucking floor. That was terrifying. Clearly, the search for Jibun has shown that Ganon has begun to make efforts to block our path forward. It is certain that the perils ahead will be far greater than any you have faced thus far. You should finish any business you have here on outset right now, so you will have no regrets later. But, in speaking of regrets, it is now, regrettably, the end of the episode. So, thank you very much for watching, and the next episode, though the King of Red Alliance has rightly told us that we can now set the three pearls down, unfortunately, there's a lot of, well, not unfortunately, fortunately, but there is a lot of stuff we can do before doing that. So anyone who wants plot should only wants plot should probably skip ahead about three or four episodes it's going to be because there's so much stuff we can do because basically the entire Great Sea has opened us up to us now. So and there's even more we can do in Outset now so I'll be doing all of that next episode. But for now thank you very much for watching this episode of The Wind Waker. I have been the Doctor with the Infamous Gentleman and I hope you'll join me next time for some questing around the Great Sea. Good day.